إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعيده ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين قيوم السماوات السبع والأرضين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد سبحانك اللهم لا إلم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل المقلة من لسان يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty we thank him and we praise him and we seek refuge in him from the evil that is in in our souls and the evil that come from our bad deeds and from the evil of shaitan we are protected from shaitan we bear witness that there is no God who deserve to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and we testify their witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and he is the last messenger sent to mankind in Jim Khan we pray him and that's how we will continue praying and asking Allah to send his salutation and blessing and peace upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and also upon his family the companions and those who follow them until the day of prayer and we pray may Allah make us among them. Alhamdulillah, it is another opportunity for us to make the business, the kind of business in which you will never lose. In fact, even if you sit down and you sleep, you have, you gain benefit. So may Allah make it easy for us. There is no gathering. That is better than this kind of gathering. Even if you see a gathering that gather more than millions of people, and you only have a gathering with your family, your wife and your child, three people only, you, your wife and your child, you just gather in just maybe five minutes to just remind each other about Allah, for Allah, your gathering of five minutes between three people are better, way better, you cannot even compare it, than millions of people who gather for like two hours, entire day, in a place where Allah's name is not mentioned. So sometimes you can make us look like, sometimes it is the number that is uh, important. No, it's the quality. The quantity is nothing. The quantity is nothing. But it's the what? The quality. So may Allah make us uh, realize, you know, the the good things that we that we really need in our life. One of those things is that don't let a week or two weeks, or even if you have a possibility to do it in three days, you don't have a sitting where the angels will, you know, gather and make dua for you, because you need that in your life. Certain area when you go, until the moment you take intention of going, the angels are writing you bad actions, like you are increasing your bad actions. Until you go there and then you spend time, the angels are still writing. And the anger of Allah is upon you until you come back. But the Masajid and the area where we, Allah's name is mentioned, the moment you take intention, you have reward before even you do it. And when you take step by step, you get forgiveness and your rank is raised in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After you come back, when you get there, the angels surround you and then they make dua for you. Until you exit and go back. This is the business, the kind of business we should always uh,
that's that's the, the, the uh, this is the, the real way of competing but today the way we compete shaitan make it change we only compete when we see a person you know has dunya it's good to always you know, work hard and have good you know good life what is nothing of that but it is better for you to compete in akhira stuff than you wasting your energy in dunya while when it comes to akhira you are so lazy we have to understand Allah created us for to work here so that we get to Jannah right so if you are lazy when it comes to your Jannah there's no way what is the point of your life because if you want to eat you want to have good life some animals have good life they eat and they, their owner has money so they they have good where they sleep you know you will never see a human being you know, some human will never get after they die so if he does what you want the you know the animal can have that person. but the difference between you and your the animal is that you know the purpose of your life the reason why you get what not to the one is that is to worship Allah. except when you are going to work you have always that intention of that ya Allah I pray that whatever I'm going to I'm going just to take uh, to get my living because today majority of us when we work is not just to uh, to just have the most important things in our life but we already have that but we still want more until we damage our akhir we damage the dunya uh, the team because we want more it's not just what we have is maybe sometimes enough for us to survive maybe for a year and which is good alhamdulillah but we still don't know because we think like oh after 50 years after 10 years but we never say that after tomorrow if what about if i die how will be my actions so the reason why muslim you should always have a gathering even if it's truth the whatsapp you have a garden on truth or youtube you have a garden when you put you do a youtube video you listen to the lecture you still have angels around you of course because you are listening to the lecture to better yourself in your deed so the angels are there but the market the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i'm not saying we shouldn't go to the market we go but it's the same of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the, the best of the place on the earth it is what Masajiduha. It is a place where Allah's name is mentioned, where sujood is, is made or is made. And the worst, the place where Allah doesn't really love, Allah dislike, is what? Is the place of businesses, markets. Because it's, it's there you will see every, everybody, any kind of person. The one who is trying to make you buy something that is bad lying, swearing, it's, it's everything. So may Allah protect us. So we say, Alhamdulillah, Allah give us opportunity to stay here. It's another gift from Allah. We, pray, we praise Him, thank Him for that. To go through the small book of our car. The book that we we learn the the way of life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it comes to his daily life, how he deal with it, what he's saying, how he's doing and we reach to the uh, to the dua when we finish winter we understand we last time we said every prayer that a muslim you pray when you finish assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah it is always connected to what three istighfar you say astaghfirullah 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 allahumma Alta salam, wa salam, Always, na filaw is farida. Every kind of prayer you have is connected. Always, when you say salam alaikum wa rahmatullah, salam alaikum wa rahmatullah, bring that before you say something, please. And we explain the reason why we say, you know, some of the reasons, it's not all of that. For certain things we don't know until we get to our Lord, then we will ask Him. And I don't think the moment you start enjoying your journey, you will even have a question to ask you about. I <laughs> is so sweet that you start enjoying 
everything, and usually men are always thinking about who they in. You know, men are always thinking about the, uh, you know, the women who are there. They will give them. I said he will give them. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So may Allah grant us, uh, you know, the best of them. I mean, so you don't even think about even asking a question until the day Allah Himself will come and show you. Because we all always we always thinking about how our Lord He looked like. Sometimes you think it like that, but the Prophet of Allah said that when you are going to talk too further, just say I was with yourself him and you know give give away give up from thinking like that because Shaitan is will play with your mind. So Allah will show Himself to us the day of the year. May Allah make us among the people of Jannah. Uh -huh. This is yeah, that's the the, the bonus that we get. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the moment you get that bonus, you wish you just stay the because it's a party that he will gather the people of Jannah in the, in the day of Juma. Everybody will come, will see each other. Oh, you know, you know, Papa uh, Mustafa, and then see, he, he see each other. We hope each other. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Then when he show himself, we will forget everything. Allah. But even when they explain us, we never understand until we make it there. So may Allah grant us them. So when you finish, the reason why, when you finish one of the reasons, we don't understand all the reasons why we do, to do, why we do this, like yesterday or yeah, yesterday, or not this morning. When I finished living prayer in the morning, I was in Brooklyn. One brother, you know, uh, African American who was he, he heard about that. Uh, every Friday we read Sotul, Sotul Kah. And the Prophet told us the reward that we get. And I think me, the woman, they told us the reward we got, uh, the benefit of reading sort of Kaf the day of uh, Juma. I think since young, I, I wasn't that curious to ask why is only is it really sort of Kaf. So the brother was asking me, why is particularly sort of Kaf? I was like, so okay, if we were to start always asking about why, why, so we're going to ask question why we do, we, do, we don't wash the neck. Why it is the, the hair? Why we don't wash the neck? Or what about our stomach? Why we don't like? So you want to get to the point where you will ask so many questions you don't have answers. The first thing that the moment you heard about this, he said, Sami and nothing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never command you to do something that is not good for you. And he will never stop, he will never tell you this one is haram without it's because of your benefit. Since you, if you know the kind of Lord you have, you don't have to question why. You just go. And then you will see that, oh, Alhamdulillah. So may Allah make us understand. But here, the reason why, one of the reasons the scholar explained that we see as the for Allah for every prayer we finish, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's what he has been doing. Anytime he finished praying, he said, Astaghfirullah, 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 Allahumma ta salam, wa min ta salam, tabaraka ya burjala al You say it, and you get a reward, double reward. Reward of saying it, and the reward of what trying to always follow the word of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the second thing is like, when you pray, who asks you to pray? Allah. Do you think we pray, we will pray perfectly the way Allah wants? No, there's always certain things that are there, mistakes. The reason why you ask Allah to forgive you before, before you, you go. When a master asks you to do something, when you do it, you ask him if it is perfect before you leave. It's good now before you leave. But we don't have Allah in front of us so that he respond to us. You yourself, the day Allah will respond to you, I think you're never going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> so since we don't have, it is the wisdom behind istighfar. When you ask Allah, Ya Allah, I have done what I'm supposed to do. That's how I can do. But I know I always have shortcomings in my, during my prayer, that's the moment I still thinking about where I pack my car, or I think about where did I put my phone, or do I have my wallet? Sometimes you sit, you pray in, and you just put your hand, if you still have your wallet, you know, because you, you think about it. 
They hated all that. It reduced the reward of the prayer. But for you to come with istighfar, thinking about all those shortcomings, Allah will complete it. The reason why we say istighfar. So, even if you have, even if you have, a, you know, sometimes an imam always make us, you know, put, make those mistakes. They finish us, salam alaikum, salam alaikum, ya jama. Oh, please. As imam, show them the, the good one. As salam alaikum, Allah. As salam alaikum, wa rahmatullah. He says, your istighfar, by facing the qibla, until you finish, Allah ma'ala salam, make us salam, tabak, ya jama, then you face what you face them after, and give them that also to do theirs, then you tell them what you have to tell them. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Jama. It's, it's not a good way. I say some imam are making those mistakes, which they're not supposed to. And this dua is not like if you don't say it, you will be sinful. No. It's not like when you don't say it, you are, you are sinful. You are not sinful, but you lose. You are losing a lot of things. So every prayer has this astaghfirullah, 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 Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarakya adha jahadu ikram. Then you do, when, when it is weaker, you add. Subhana al-Malik al-Quddus, Subhana al-Malik al-Quddus, Subhana al-Malik al-Quddus, Rabb al-Malaikat wa'ruh. You got it? Subhana al-Malik al-Quddus, Subhana al-Malik al-Quddus, then the third time, Subhana al-Malik al-Quddus, Rabb al-Malaikat wa'ruh. But the truth first, you have to say it in low voice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to lower his voice when it is the first two. He says, Subhan al Malik al-Quddus, Subhan al Malik al-Quddus. The third one, then he says, Subhan al Malik al-Quddus, Rabb al-Malaikat wa'ruh. You got it? Inshallah. Or some people in another religion, there is no Rabb al-Malaikat wa'ruh. They just say, Subhan al Malik al-Quddus. But it's always good when it comes to zikr. When there is art, you art. Because you get more reward, inshallah. Rabbil malaikat al We are make us understand. So the next dua we going to learn is the dua that we all know. We all have to know also. Of course, all the dua the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought us, we need to try our best to learn it. You don't need to memorize it. You have your phone. Download the app. It is always there will translate it. It's literated in, in English. That the way you see the the one that is so dark, is they will write in your book always like that. Alhamdulillah. Even if you don't know how to read in Arabic, you can still read it. And in our app, we have even the sound if you want to hear it. Alhamdulillah. Now we have a lot of things. I was explaining it one sister how I was telling her to listen before she memorized, and it just comes to my mind how we were memorizing by our time. It is the tape we use, the manito, uh, how we call it? Uh, the tape. Oh, the tape. The tape cassette. The tape cassette. Mm. Okay. Radio. The radio. radio yeah. You know, they have Walkman, uh, the one you put, the small one. Yeah. yeah. Walkman. Yes. That's, you know, my time, that's the one, you know, I saw my, some of my chicken and then <laughs> I bought it. So, and then you use the battery. It's the battery, when the battery is low, you put it on the, on, on the sun. On the sun? And me, us, we put it on the sun. Yes. Under the sun, until the, the you know, uh, the evening, it will become stronger. And then the tape, I don't have the tape of Quran. I have to go and rent it from someone and take it before I listen. Because I want to memorize. But today we have our phone. You just have to what? Click. That's it. It will stick, it will reset. But we don't do it. So how? So may Allah make this for us. And this is a name and we don't use it. So we should download the app in our phones and we will have all it is transliterated and we can read it the way we can inshallah. It's in Arabic, it's in English, in French, in any language, German, Chinese, everything you see it, inshallah. So here is the one. It's the dua that you say in the time of worry and grief. 
regard the awl ham wal huzn is the dua that a Muslim you say when when you are in this uh, in the state of what of grief and sadness worry yeah you, you, you are really worried about something and this dua we need to learn it also and we read it through the book we never know the day Allah will make us uh, Allah will make us uh, memorize it easily you just have to read from your phone and you will be able inshallah one day to stay in your head inshallah I just want to bring the hadith so that we all hear the hadith inshallah how it is said and I think I did, I did the the khutbah about it one day here inshallah So this is the dua, the hadith. And Ibn Masoud, and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قال, من كثر همه فليقل اللهم إني عبدك وابن عبدك وابن أمتك وابن أمتك وفي قبضتك ناصيتي بيدك ما ذن في حكمك ما ذن في قضاءه أسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو زلته في كتابك أو علمته أحد من خلقك and then another adoration أو ألهمت عبادك أو استأثرت به في مكنون الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن ربيع قلبي وجلاء همي that's another adoration وضمي ما قالها عبد القطن إلا أذهب الله ضمه أذهب الله ضمه وأبدله فرجا so this is another adoration I will bring the one we all read sometimes which is here he said uh, Allahumma inni abduk that's the one here Allahumma inni abduk ibn abdik ibn amatik nasiyati biyadik maadun fiya hukmuk adun fiya qalauk as'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak sammayta bihi nafsak awa zaddahu fi kitabik awa alamtahu ahadam min khalqik أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن ربيع قلبي ونور صدري وجلاء حزني وذهاب همي. and عبد الله بن مسعود he's the one who reported the hadith said anyone who is who is dealing with what anxiety is anyone the message of the saint if anyone is affected by much care and anxiety and sadness and worry should say Allahumma inni abdu Ya Allah, oh Allah, I am your slave Ibn Abdi the son of your, sl of your male slave Ibn Amati and the son of what? your sl uh, fe uh, female slave okay and he said Masiyat, uh, nasiyati biyati. my forehead is in your hand it means you don't controlling me my going and my return all my life you the one who has the remotes do the go the go this way go this way nasiati piety it means if today i am in worried and sadness ya allah is because you you want it to happen because wama tashauna illa an yasha allah wa rabbuna nasiati piety he said adun fi qada and this is your Decision. If today I am sad, it is your decision, Ya Allah. So I'm saying, Ya Allah, ma dunfiya hukumuk. I'm saying that, Ya Allah, uh, your judgment upon me is assured, is already confirmed. You already mentioned. You already write what is going to happen to me. Ma dunfiya hukumuk. But ma dunfiya kabaru. It's not like I'm complaining, Ya Allah. Whatever you decide upon me, you are just. You understand? The Muslim is not supposed to complain. If we really understand the meaning of Al-Qadr, Al-Qadr, 
the decree, the iman of what? Uh, the decree? Wallah, we shouldn't complain in our life. No man. Because when you complain, it's like you tell Allah, Ya Allah, oh, Wallah, I don't deserve this. You are unjust. Right? Yes. Because today if I'm, I'm, I'm poor, it's because I'm not one. It doesn't mean that I have to sit down and don't do anything. But some people have been struggling going from place to places. It's a lot of people, and sometimes you hear some people, they make it, they went to Germany. You know, they were doing business in their country already. And they moved to another country, start doing business from the, another country coming to their country. It doesn't work and they went to Germany. No, they went to Italy and then they come here. But they still struggle. But you, someone will just say in his spirit, and he's powerful, he has everything. We're going to say that the one who doesn't have, who, still, who makes to three countries and he's still poor, is because he's lazy? No. But the one who sits there and doesn't do anything, he doesn't even try himself, he shouldn't complain, saying that it is Allah. We always have to try our best. When you try, you don't have, you know that it is what Allah decided for you. But I don't want to sit down always in the masjid. Ya Allah, give me, this, give me this, and I don't, I don't wear. Umar ibn al-Khattab would a lot of people because of that. He saw him like a couple of days. He sitting down in the masjid. He, they, everybody go out and they come back and then they find him the same thing. They say, the next day the same thing. People, you, you come here. So what's your problem? He asked. What's your problem? He said, What are you talking about? I said, yeah, I see you in the masjid. You sitting down there. I will tell why. What's the problem? You don't go out. You don't go and look for your, your living, what you need in your provision. So I said, no, Allah is the razik, he will give me present. Huh? That, that, so, did you see, and then he said, he, he said, bring me something, give me the, you know, the stick. He worked with him, and said, what happened? Said, yes, I worked with him. Did you see in you know, the sky, you know, raining in the gold, or did you see the earth coming out the, the silver? So that we can go out and seek, even if it is the, uh, uh, what's the name? You have to find some new wood and sell, go to it. Allah will never send them a rain of gold or make the earth, you know, come out with what? Silver like that easily. No, you have to go and work. Even those who are having gold, they have to dig. They lose their life like me. So go work. So here I'm saying, a Muslim, whatever situation you find yourself, it is the decree of Allah and it is just. Complaining, it is not the way of a Muslim. You see some Muslims say, oh, me and brother, how are you? Oh, Imam. So today you see him, he said that, the next day you see him, when you see him from far, you're gonna run away. Because he put you in problem with your Lord. Allah is the one who put you in that position and you, you want me to go and fight Allah? Ya Allah. A Muslim is always saying Alhamdulillah ya ala kulli haal. Alhamdulillah ya ala kulli haal. In every circumstance you find, you find yourself, Alhamdulillah. Brothers, it's not that for no reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us start our prayer with what? Alhamdulillah ya Rabbil Alameen. 17 times a day. We always say, Alhamdulillah. You may think that you are miserable, but what, Wallah, if Allah took you and take you to some people, you are the one who is the, the most richest person. So we have to be careful. This dua is telling us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Adulun fiya qadahu, Ya Allah, your decree concerning me is just. Your decree concerning me is just. Today I am sad because the dua is what? The, du the dua of what? Sadness, worry, anxiety. Today you see everybody, even the king, the children. You see the, I'm depressed. Elucha, I am poor. I'm depressed. Of course, when we were young, we never have that. Because, you know, we go out, they have to whoop us because we, before you come, out, come back. But it's normal that our children are complaining because they are depressed, because it's just those four walls they live in between. So they, they take, you know, only time with their spring. 
you don't want them to watch it because it's too much fitna also. So you want them to sit down like that. They will be bored. They will be depressed. It's normal. If they don't get used to Quran and have uh, given their happiness to feet, you, we're going to be in trouble. But when we were young, the way we were raised, the whole village, you will, you will colonize the whole village in, a, a, you know, in the morning only. You go around, you play around, you have friends. Everyone is, is, is safe, you can go out. But the former brain, you have to show up. That's the most important thing. You know you late, you know that, that say you have like 15 lashes behind you, on your back. But today the children is not like that. They have also insight like us. Because they have the same schedule as us. The moment we were praying around uh, 6 something, it was 6 something, right? Huh? 5 something, right? Or 6? No, before they change the time. So you see, when you come in from the masjid, even before the masjid, you go, the woman is standing, waiting for the school bus for the child to run, and she will just run also to to work. It's only when she comes back from work also she has to go and grab the child. You see the child is like dead already. We are killing their childhood without realizing. That's how this society works. The reason the children at the past age, they act like they are already old. They don't have childhood. We force them to do things that they cannot do. A child is supposed to sleep until it is the you know the sun comes and then they wake up. But we want to wake up, wake up, I'm gonna be late at the way. That's what we do. Well that's not fair. It's not fair. I don't know what we have to think about it and find solutions for our children. Because it's not right for a child less than eleven years old before even they reach the age of puberty, but they say that they are born. Or they are depressed. Anxiety. All that. No. No, they shouldn't have. Of course, the reason is they enter the group before they age. It's danger group. It's not it's not about that. Aji 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 Ibrahim. I'm, what I'm talking is not about the group now. Why they have the group? Before we used to have groups. I don't really understand. Before we used to have groups, but we play around and this environment is safe. Our parents can let us play outside. Let me finish each other. Our parents can let us go outside and play around, play soccer until they want. They the one who will tell us to move. Then we'll go back and you know take shower and sleep. But today the children don't have a friend like that. First of all, at the best age, lower age. They already have the schedule of a, what a grown a grown person. That's what I'm saying. We already when we were young, they don't wake us up early like that. Before your age of seven, they don't wake you up. They can even they can even spend next to the grown people. Perfect. But you sleep. The old people will go and pray, and you come back. They come back until when it is the sunrise. You don't who will wake up. Then they take care of you. But today, because of our work, we wake them up. They have seven hours of sleep or eight hours of sleep is not our problem. Five hours of sleep is not our problem. It is normal that they become sad. And when they go to school also, they are not allowed to sleep. <laughs> a child is supposed to have a time of sleep of eight or uh, nine, nine hours. And plus. And plus. But we don't give them that chance. Since they don't have that chance, when they go out, when we the, uh, the day they are home, we come back from work, we want them to be quiet. Stay, they, you don't want them out. It's normal because there is no safe outside. outside. We want them to stay home, and then they wash them, their screen stop. The moment you wake up, you see what they watch. is you know supposed to watch it. So what do you want them to do? Like we are in a funny position. Yes. So they are depressed also. So they should learn this also. <laughs> they have to learn this to happen. That's the that's my that's the my point. That's what I was I want to come.
When they are depressed, we have to teach them this dua. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that anyone who read this dua, Allah will take away his sadness and his worry until Allah will change it to what happiness and tranquility. You know, some of course, that's what I'm saying. Of course, we teach them. We know what how they they say. Allah, it's so sad. I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for myself, but when you look at these children, you feel sorry for them more. Because evil is anywhere. The parents don't eat, don't care, even if you went out, outside when you were, we were young. When you don't have school, you went outside from morning to like, if your problem is that you have to show up before nothing. Or at least you have to pray Maghrib in the masjid of the neighborhood, that's it. That's your problem. But here today, every minute you don't know what your child is, you are worried. You have to look around. Because evil is everywhere. So I, we have to feel sorry for this children. So may Allah help us changing the situation, inshallah. We cannot do that until we all come back to Islam. We have to come back to what? The right way. Allah is the one who created us. He knows what is good for us. But we leave what is what Allah told us and we follow the system of the human being. Until they tell us, oh, you are free now. Whatever you choose to uh, to be, you are free. Someone said that everybody is free to say that they are women or they are men or they are in between. So the journalist was like, okay, there's no problem. So today, a white man, he said, okay, today I am a black in a woman. So ah, how can you be a black woman? He said, yes, since you say everybody can be what they can be. I am a black woman. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. Ah, ah. So why you want us to believe that a man can come, a grown man can come with a beer and say that he is a woman? It doesn't make sense. If they school, they have their own bathroom now. That's what I'm saying. SubhanAllah. So the people we think we follow, we copy, we want happiness, that's what where they're talking, they're taking us. But Allah is telling us this way, we say, no, yeah, Allah, yeah, I think nowadays it's not like that, it is this way. We want to see. Until they will enter in the world of Lisa, we will follow them. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. We will follow them like step by step, step by step like that. The Prophet Sallallahu said, even when they enter in the hole of Lisa, that is so small, we will enter in. So this is what we're doing today. We have to be honest. I am included. We all. So may Allah save us. So this is the dua. Uh, I will repeat it again. Allahumma inni abdu. Oh Ya Allah, I am your slave. Ibn Abdik, I am a slave of the slave, male, uh, I'm, uh, this, uh, a son of your slave male or male slave. Ibn Abdik, the son of what? A female slave. Nasiya Tibiyadik, Ya Allah, my forehead is in your hand. When he say about Nasiya Tibiyadik, it's like he, uh, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, you put a rope and then you uh, uh, you tie it through my head. You are the one taking it wherever you are. You the one who has the remote controlling my life. Nasiati biyati. It's not the reason. Uh, it's not the. It's not for no reason. When you want to pull an animal, you put the the rope on his neck. Or sometimes those who have the the cone, we put the the thing. It's the reason why. It's, you can control a person through that. Nasiyati biyadik, ma'adun fi yakukumakum. Whatever you have decided about me is already done. It's already happened, it's already done. So, adun fi yakadau, today I am sad, right? Tomorrow maybe I will be happy, I am poor. Ya Allah, this is what you have decided on me. But it is just. Adun fi yakadau. Your decree upon me is just. I'm not complaining. Whatever happened to me, it is because you want it to happen. Even if it is Imam who is the, uh, the how we call it, Sabbath. Imam is the one who caused it. The cause comes from what? Imam, yeah, Allah is because you're the one who allow it to happen. If today, you know, people, you may have protected from that. Some people who don't have the document, 
they are getting uh, deported. Is it the marshal and the police who are capturing the picture and the people? Is it them who are doing it? Usually it's the one who signed the people, right? The same thing with our spiral water. So the reason why, until we get to the highest level of Iman, if right now, uh, Abdullah is play, playing now, right now, that's my son, Alhamdulillah, my nephew. If he is playing now, and then he come and then just play, and then this uh, delicious and uh, sweet coffee I have from Chef just fall, and then it's fall, and everything is fall on the floor. Normally, I'm supposed to say, it. I'm not supposed to complain to Abdullah. Only I will complain, not complain, but teach him how to behave. But complain about losing this is like you telling Allah, and until now your Iman is not strong. We understand. Because it not happen except Allah with Allah with Allah. Allah with Allah. It is a very tricky uh, uh, topic when it comes to Qadha wal Qadr. The decree, especially when it comes to Bahadwa, it is so hard. Even the, you know, the, the messenger, they have problem with it. Because Musa alayhi salatu wa will go to Adam and complain. You all know the hadith. He will come to Adam, ah, it's you, you are the source of our problems. Allah created you and he put you in Jannah. Only one, one tree, don't approach it. You were not patient, you went, you went and died and eat it. Today we suffer. We suffer. We are in between Jannah and Jahannam. It's because of you. So they were going back and forth, and at the end, Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, Ya Musa, you are going to fight me over something Allah created, Allah already writes, it's going to happen like 5,000 years before you and I will be created. You going to complain about that? That's the moment Musa just started. He couldn't do anything. So Qadha wa al-Qadr, it is a very tricky uh, topic. Until them, some good people become kuf kafir, they become kufar because of them. Scholars. When you hear Jabariya and, and all those things, Qadariya, it is from there. Because some people think that, oh, whatever you do, don't worry, it is Allah who decides that you will do. And they forget that Allah created you with what? Choice. He gave you choice. You, you, you see goodness, you follow, you see bad, it's you have to, ch to choose. So we don't want to enter in, in that topic, inshallah. Maybe we will have an entire lesson for a month about it, inshallah. But, Adonofiya Qadaluk, Ya Allah, whatever you have decreed about, uh, about me, it is just. But a Muslim, you have, you have that gift during Ramadan, which we call Laylatul Qadr. That if you work hard and you, are, you ask Allah to change the bad side of your decree to goodness, He will change it. He's the only one who can change your father. By certain father, He cannot change it. It is already written. There's no way He will be like some scholar even put your life, how, how, many, uh, how long you're going to stay in, your, uh, in, in, uh, in dunya. If you ask for long life, it's just saying. But if Allah accepts the dua, He will put barakah. We understand. Some people live for like 20, 27 years, but it looks like they stay for like 100 years. Other people stay and they're still alive like 100 years, but they look like they are dead. We understand, right? Some people live, already left dunya, but people still remember them like they are still alive. But other people live long, they still 100 and they're still alive, strong, but nobody cares about them. It looks like they're already dead. It's the bark. Ramla, radiallahu anha. That's our mother, the Ummul Mu'mini. Ramla to be to Abu Sufyan, right? It's Abu Sufyan's daughter. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was making dua, asking Allah to increase the life of, you know, uh, the, in the, 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 the period of time that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will stay here and her brother uh, Muawiyah and so on. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was passing it in his ear. He said, Yeah, Ramallah. Ramallah, what are you doing? You are going to fit in You're asking Allah to give us one life. No, it's not going to work like it's already set. But ask Allah to put barakah in our life. 
So sometimes we say we are not giving us more money, especially during E. And we say, I mean, I mean, not like it's good, it's not, it's not bad. But it's more we say, yeah, Allah put work in our life. Because it's not to you staying long and you don't do anything. Good. So Adam Fiya, Qabaw, Ya Allah, whatever you have decided about me, it is good. It is just. Adam, it's just. As Alka be kulli smin huwa. Ya Allah, I ask you by every name that you have named yourself with. Sammayka bihi nafsa. Okay? Aw anzaltahu fi kitabik. Aw what you have revealed in your book. Aw anlamtahu ahadam min al-qadqib. Or that you have taught one of your, your servant. One of your crea creation. We see how, what, you know, the, the scary things that, what his name? Khidr have done when he was walking with uh, Musa, all Musa Farun. The man who passed by and then he destroyed the, uh, the ship of those people. And then he, they, were, they were passing and then he killed that young man young boy and then then he went and start fixing the wall of the people who have been so mean to them they did not give them anything any shelter it is Allah who gave him that permission we understand and we remember also the time of Suleiman alayhi salatu was salam when they told him about the lady the, you know the the people of tarikh history they say he, her name is Balqis when that bird come back and he, you know, revealed to him that, oh, he, you know, the bird discovered people who are worshipping sun and they have a queen and she has a very big arsh throne. So the prophet, uh, prophet is, uh, Suleiman commanded his people to, if they can, he can find one of them who can just bring her throne before even they reach. That lady reached to him. And one, one of the creations just do it in blink of eyes. It is a distance that take for months before you reach there, or for you know weeks before you reach there. In the blink of eye, he brought the the tone. It is with the name. Qala Nabi in the whole ilmun min al kitab. Ana atika bihi qabla an yafta bi katafuk. And then right away, before he just a blink of eye, he saw it. Even if it is downstairs here, you want to bring a very big arch, it will take for a while. But blink of eye, from far away from another city to that, that city, it happened. It is because he has You teach one of your name, one of your congregations. But today I'm not going to wake up today and say that oh, Allah teach me one name, so you have to use it and say ask of, say how many times before you have this. No, 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 this is a lie. Whatever we want is Allah gave, give it to what? The prophets. The names is Allah who give to the prophet who will give to us. There's no secret in it. I'm not going to speak today say, oh, I, I dream, Allah give me this name, you have to say it hundred times. Oh, no, no, it's a lie. And it's a haram. You don't do that. But I use here Allah maybe I had a illa manir tabo mil rasul. You are not a rasul. Are you a that you are a messenger? We are a protector from that. So I want to learn to ahad al khalqi. I wish that I felt that he be able to give you a name about yourself that you keep for yourself. Nobody knows. And take Allah the Quran or be a khalqi. That you take the way, make the Quran the spring of my heart. The spring of my heart. They say spring because that's how spring, right? That's the season that everybody knows. Everybody, spring. Until we have a water, what's the name? Polar spring, right? <laughs> everybody, when you see this water and the other one, pure life water, everybody will grab this one. <coughs> spring, because spring. The spirit of my my heart, the Quran. So a Muslim, inshallah, next we go over to A Muslim, if the Quran is not spring of your heart, you have to change for yourself. You, everybody can talk about politics. You sit there, Islam smiling. The moment they say, I will be like, you're taking your shoes, you're running away. Be careful. Are you shaitan? 
Because we say, I will be the and so the shaitan is you know, go away. So if you start going, you have to think about it. I think we're going to stop here, inshallah. Next week we will continue for the same dua. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa bihamdik. Nashhadu wa ilaha illa anta nistakhir wa ta'ala wa ilaha salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.